All right, INPI brought to you by DigiKey. And Adrian, thank you so much, DigiKey. On to me is tonight's Ion MPI celebrating a temporary pause in Manhattan, on Terrace. Woo, party! You know what would be cool if it was just Manhattan? I, Everybody's moving here. Well, it's a federal, federal joke. Oh, okay, let's, let's keep going. All right, go. Okay, next up, uh, we're doing okay. on seven. We did on seven last week because we did those um, cameras with the global shutter. But, uh, you know, sometimes you get two in a row. So this week, we're also doing on semi. We're doing their eFuse, the NIV and NIS 3071. Um, actually, DigiKey recommended this because they said a lot of people were asking them about this product and they thought, you know, more, more people should know about four channel e fuses. So, we've um, covered e fuses before um, a couple times. And um, for folks who are probably wondering, like, what is an e fuse? Well, it's a lot like a normal fuse that you're used to, these kind of glass fuses that have a wire inside. Um, and you've seen these in, you know, cars and toys and microwaves and, and you know, your multimeter. Um, you know, they allow a certain amount of current. Once you go over that current, that wire in the middle uh, gets really hot, burns up and opens up, th thus protecting you and the device from um, having too much current go through it. Problem is you can only use them once. And so people came up with the idea of polyfuses. Um, these are temperature-based resistors. And as more current goes through them, um, they're nonlinear. So as the temperature gets hotter and hotter, it reaches a certain point where that much current has gone through them, the temperature goes up, uh, the resistance starts growing exponentially and then, you know, they open up and they basically become um, open circuits. They don't let more current through until they cool off. And then once um, they cool off, the resistance drops and then current is allowed through. So, you know, these are basically resettable versions of those previous fuses. Um, these have voltage limits, whereas like, you know, most glass fuses don't. And there are, you know, usually they can, they can do a lot of current, but maybe not as much as um, some glass fuses. But they're still not, you know, ideal. Um, you know, here's here's a fuse, for example, that we use in uh, the um, Sparkle Motion, and this is like a five amp fuse, which is not even like that much, but it's like huge. You know, it's, it's physically quite large. Um, whereas, like, if you look at, you know, this product is a W sod. We, we, I don't I don't have it right next to it, but it's like an eighth of the size of this gigantic fuse. Um, so previous fuses we covered from on semi were for like computer systems that were good for like 12 volts. They were higher current for like hard drives and stuff. So 12 volt, maybe um, five amp. This uh, particular product is um, not specifically designed for, but is often used by people doing automotive projects. Although I think anyone who's doing a robotics project or anything with distributed powers is going to be interested in fuses, in e-fuses, because not only do you get that, um, current limitation control, but you can also turn on and off and this is sequence the power. So you can turn off and turn, turn on and off um, the power sections of your project one by one, which helps kind of stabilize the system. You know, you, you turn on maybe your microcontroller, wait till that boots up. Now you turn on the radio system. Now you turn on the TFT display, then you turn off the motors um, going step by step so that the, the boot up doesn't, um, the boot up and, and power draw of each system doesn't affect the others. And this is um, happening more for automotive because, you know, as people have EVs um, and the cars that people have have way more technology in them, like you now have like entertainment systems and a lot more climate control and you have, you know, maybe um, separate charging stations and you have a lot more sensors um, and safety equipment da, 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 and like, you know, electronic locks, and electronic, everything is, is electronic. And... So the wiring harnesses of automotive have gotten like really intense because it used to be you just like rolled out your window with like a knob and that's that's now like three years ago. Now you everything is electric. Um, and so you have to distribute power all over the place, but doing that if efficiently and easily so that things don't break, um, they last through all temperatures, they um, survive vibration, they survive um, you know, the complicated wiring systems. Having an advanced power management system is important. That's where EFETs uh, e fuses e fuses come in. Um, and in particular, what's great about this fuse is that it can handle up to 60 volts and two and a half amps per FET. So they have this pass FET um, with a current limit sensing in it. And you can turn them, you can enable each one on and off. And it um, also has like thermal and under voltage lockout. And because it can do 60 volts, it's very good for um, 
the kind of automotive systems where you have 48 volts or 24 volts or 12, you have multiple voltages that you might want to control. Um, and each one is independent, but they can be up to 60 volts. And one thing is, you know, you're like, well, two and a half amps isn't much. What if I need uh, five or 10? Well, you could double up, triple up or quadruple up the outputs. So for example, on the bottom left, you see if you have, you need 10 amp out, you just connect all the inputs and outputs together. And now you've got up to 60 volts, 10 amps. So it's kind of nice. You can, you know, use it either way. Um, each of the FETs has an enable pin. So you can, like I said, sequence each one. Each one has individual input, output. There's iLIM. So iLIM is the current limiting. So by default, it's two and a half amps, but let's say you want, you know, two amps or one amp only. Um, so the channels are all set by that one resistor. Of course, if you double them up, just you know, multiply it out. And there's also DVDT, which is your SLU control. So another thing that you know comes up with these is as you turn on each uh, power segment, you want to make sure that you don't have this like huge spike in voltage, which uh, can ring or can um, you know cause spikes and and uh, difficulty for the capacitor, since they don't like to be um, charged very quickly. In which case, you set up the slew rate, you put like a capacitor resistor on it, I don't remember, maybe both, like go to the capacitor, and it'll slow down so you can say limit it to be like one volt per 10 milliseconds or something, a nice slow ramp up um, to keep everything going nice and smoothly. There's two versions in stock. There's the um, NIV and NIS. The NIS is the non-automotive one, so it's like 20 cents cheaper. Um, but if you're doing automotive and you want um, the qualification, for that, then pick up the NIV 3071. There's also other variants in the EastFuse family, like on Semi has a ton of different products. Um, but I think, especially if you're dealing with stuff with 48 volts, this is going to be great. Because I think a lot of the e-fusers I've looked at, to be honest, don't usually go above like 20. Um, they're not meant for higher voltages in automotive. So check no, this out. Was this used on the Apollo command module? Did they use? Um, I don't know that they had. I mean, they might have made... DIY electronic fuses, um, where they electrically control stuff. But honestly, they probably use relays. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if relays work well in. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, Astro. A lot of uh, documentation about the missions that needed uh, some fixing. Yeah. On the way or back, so there probably is some information about that. I don't we know. Could but probably if, find out. But if you're designing, um, you know, automotive or or other transport systems where you want to Going minimize back to your the moon, wiring, perhaps. then uh, check out this eFuse from Onseni. And that's this week's Iron MPI. Hi, on MPI.